Hey guys, welcome to The Gunshot with me, Johnny, and today we're going to be looking at shotgun calibers. So before we go onto the board, here is some visual context. A 410, a 28, a 20, a 16, and a 12. And a 4 ball just to make them all look childish. The only thing we're not gonna to touch on today is cartridge length, which again can change quite a lot. Obviously, between a two inch 12 bore and a three and a half inch 10 bore or a three and a half inch 12 bore, there can be a huge difference. However, we're looking at bore width today. Anyway, enough of that. Board. So before we go any further, it's probably worth understanding the strange denominations of bore, 10, 12, 16, 20, 28. That is the number of lead spheres of the size that will fit into one pound. So if you get a sphere of lead that is one pound and chop that into tenths, you'll end up with 10 10 bore size balls. If you chop it into 20, you'll get 20 20 bore size balls to a pound and so on and so forth. This all stems back from a time when lead was purchased by the pound and it's kind of stuck around ever since. Hence we are now stuck with 10, 12, 16, 20, 28 and the 410 which doesn't make so much sense as well as an array of others that have come and gone over the years. Depending on what country you come from will depend on whether you call this a 12 bore or a 12 gauge. In England, it is still a 12 bore. In America, you guys will call it a 12 gauge. We are obviously correct here. However, what I'm about to say might disprove that. However, old world logic is my favorite logic. So, a bore. A bore is a hole in something. A 12 bore means it's a 12 bore sized hole. The bore is the hole. The gauge, is the bore diameter. So technically, and depending on what side of the argument you're on, it, it should be a 12 gauge. However, a 12 isn't really a gauge as such. It should be a 729 gauge and a 12 bore because the bore is the hole. And it's a 12 bore size hole. Anyway, let's get off of this subject. I'm probably fighting a losing battle. So here we have the common and popular sizes of shotgun. A 10 bore, 12 bore, 16, 20, 28, and a 410. Obviously, by the logic of number of lead spheres in a pound, that you can, and people have over the years, made just about every calibre or ball under the sun, whether that be a 13, a 14, a 15, a 16, a 24. 24s are still fairly common on the continent. Um, four, two, one, that's generally referred to as a cannon. And as such, the options are pretty limitless. However, we have settled on these over the years. So what do these mean nominally? Well, let's move down to the first one, the bore diameter. And for those of you who prefer metric, this is in millimeters, this is in inches. A 12 bore is nominally 0.729 of an inch. That can vary. Obviously, a bore diameter for a shotgun is not quite so necessarily perfect as the bore diameter of a rifle. A rifle bore should be perfectly parallel and straight. A shotgun bore can fluctuate somewhat. So a 12 bore can go from 709 all the way to 749 of an inch. 729 of an inch is nominally 18.5 millimeters. 10 bore or 775 or 19.7, 16 at 663, two thirds of an inch, or 16.8, 20 at 615 or 15.6, 28 at 0 0.55 or 14.0, and 410, which actually is just called 410 because it's a 410 bore diameter, which is 10.4. I have researched and spoke to a lot of people and I can't find a definitive answer of why it is actually just called 410, but I suppose it doesn't matter. It just is. As much as bore diameter, bore area matters very much for those of us who care about the physics and ballistics of a shotgun. As a ball gets bigger, although it doesn't look like a huge gap, it does get exponentially larger in surface area. This will allow your shot column to change, and when we move on to loads, although you can put a 28 gram load in everything on the table here apart from the 410, the shot column will obviously get significantly longer because 24 grams of shot will fill up more space in the 0.55 tube than the 775 tube, obviously. And as such, will require very different pressures and logic to get it out the end of the barrel. Load variants. The 410 goes from 9 to 20, the 28, 14 to 28, the 20, 21 to 35, the 16, 24 to 32, the 12, 21 to 63, and the 10, 28 to 84. These are all commonly available factory loads. If you home load, you can obviously take it down lower or you can push it up higher if you require. It's worth stating that each caliber has an appropriate load level. The load level is the amount that actually should go in there, not what is commonly available from the factory. For example, shoving an ounce in a 28 ball is not natural. To the same logic, shoving an ounce of minimum load in a 10 ball is not gonna give you optimum performance. It's about finding the optimum middle ground in terms of shot column length, load weight, charge weight of powder to the weight of the gun. Obviously, each of these guns is built on a different frame. Not all the time, depending on the manufacturer, but they should all be built on a different frame. 
As such, the reason we don't shoot a 10 ball all the time, even though it would give us the most killing power, is that it would weigh the most. There's also benefits at this end of the scale, that with smaller cartridges, you can fit more in your pockets. That's quite nice. Post the 410 mark, everything here is capable of taking quarry with the right loads at sensible distances. However, if you want to push the boundaries of ballistic performance, A, you should probably home load, and B, you need to be using one of these with a big, big shot charge to get the best load. In fact, Alan from our muzzle loading series regularly takes 70 yard birds with ease with his 10 ball because he loads a very fast, very heavy load for it. And the gun is very capable of taking that. There are, of course, other commonly available calibers out there. The four, the eight, and the nine mil sit right on the other ends of the spectrum. They weren't really worth putting on there because how many people actually own them and shoot them in practical settings? So which one of these is best? Just going on the logical numbers here. One would probably say the 12 ball. You have an equal lightest load with the 28, and yet you're up at 63 grams, so you can almost compete with a 10. Intelligently, the 12 ball is the way to go, full versatility. This is because it's the most common, and as such, the most research and development has gone into cartridge variety. However, good as it is, there is so much variety in the world, and actually, ballistically, in regular loads, a 20 ball up in the 30, 32 gram mark will compete with the same 30 or 32 gram cartridge you put in the 12 ball. So I suppose what I'm really trying to say is it's a kind of horses for courses thing. If you're out shooting 70 yard geese, I probably wouldn't take a 20 ball. However, if I'm shooting upland walked up game over pointers, you know, when the birds are 25 to 30 yards away, I'm not gonna be taking my 10 when a 20 or 28 would be perfectly acceptable with the right load workout. There is also, of course, the mystic factor of choke. Choke can change any of these guns with different loads to put different patterns on paper at different distances. So really, it's as much a combination of these mixed with choke, mixed with these, to get the performance you require. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye, and we'll see you next time. Hi guys, welcome to the gun shop.